Cindy Coburn and Carol Norman. There's the handshake before the title match. $40,000. Well, those two young lady professional bowlers are making history right now, Virginia Norton. They certainly are. Prior to this, the one thing that uh, Carol Norman wanted to think about was just going out and making good shots. I wonder if she's still able to do that. Virginia didn't look like she hit that shot at all. It looked like she almost lost it on the way down. It sure did. I don't know if that's a matter of coming back out and starting a new match where she wasn't quite settled or what was happening there, but she did not look the same as she did in the last match. And you know, I think bowling for the title obviously changes your approach, doesn't it, a little bit? Well, you would hope it doesn't, but it certainly has to have a little bit of an effect. Well, the important thing now is to cover up the spare in the opening frame. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly the way you would have shot it, but what the heck, it's a spare. What great tradition for the Coburn family. And we talked to Cindy earlier today and asked her her thoughts about bowling for a historic $40,000. Well, it's funny you should mention that. In 75, my mom was uh, the winner of the first time the largest prize fund. Then again in 81, um, I was in the same position. I won $25,000 when that was the record-breaking uh, prize money. Now here I am again in 87, bowling for U.S. Open Championship and uh, the largest prize fund, and uh, hopefully the pattern will continue. And, and she walked out the opening frame and struck just like uh, she was throwing practice ball. Tripped the four pin, and, and Cindy looks as loose as she could be. Under the circumstances, if you look at her face, she may look a little bit tense, a little bit thoughtful. But as far as her overall basic approach, it looks like Cindy Coburn all week long. Very methodical, very businesslike, very effective. A little while. But there again, that's what's happened on this left-hand lane. Earlier, that ball would not have made it back. It's able to now. Well, if you're the top seed, you'd like to get out of the gate in a hurry and throw a double, and that's exactly what Cindy accomplished. That's right. Cindy, a little basic four-step approach goes all the way through it. What an excellent follow-through. Higher backswing than Carol Norman. But uh, all of these girls have their own little idiosyncrasies. They all get the job done. Well, there you see the graphic. 2-0 and o this week against the top seed. And a very solid strike on lane 36. Both players, I think, are in a position. They're going to make a run for this time. They are, and... Carol Norman this time not using the big loss, the ball coming off her hand earlier than it did in the previous match on those couple of shots that she really got down the lane. This one sets up in the pocket beautifully. Would you say that perhaps Carol's biggest asset would be uh, ball speed? Maybe Virginia, she's a little better at throwing it hard and soft? Uh, not necessarily. I think Carol, one of the things that's so good about Carol is she's compact, she goes up and she just doesn't try and overpower anything. She gets a lot of good ball speed, but she doesn't look like she's overpowering it. And what a great shot. We saw a critical solid eight by Lisa Wagner in the sixth frame of the last match. This one early in the match. Same shot. Five pins straight back. Nothing touches the eight. Is the ball supposed to touch the eight? No, the ball should be touching the five, the one, three, five, and nine. The five pin should be going into the eight, so that was actually too strong. The ball should be flexed a little bit. That's great, isn't it? I mean, you throw the ball too good at some times. It's a tough enough game, Virginia. Why in the heck would you have to leave those solid eights and nines? That's part of the game. It's oh, just boy. the luck of the sport. Gee, many Christmas, or the rub of the green, as they say. That's huh? right. Boy, oh boy, what a great shot that was. Well, Cindy Coburn has started with a double. I'd like to make it a three-bagger here. And you can see the concentration on her face. Those eyes won't move all the way to the foul line. Excellent concentration. She eased up a little bit as she went through the shot. That one's going to cost her. And unless she has some miracle happen here, she's going to hand the lead right back to Carol Norman key position right now, she wants to get one of these because otherwise she's losing an extra two pins in count. Well, a very tough break. Four pin kicked out. The seven might have gone with it, but it didn't, so a seven-ten split. 
sets off the uh, the opening double. So right now it's a uh, four pin lead for Carol Norman, who sat on the bench and took the lead, and that's always a nice position to be in. Well, certainly, especially after you've left a solid eight to not catch up and to have that kind of thing come back, she's got to be thinking, okay, maybe things are going to even out in my in my favor. I'm sure that the lady that's up right now, Cindy Coburn isn't thinking about the shot she just made. She's going to go out and make a good shot. It would not surprise me at all to see her strike. And for the first time this afternoon, we've had a re-rack on the left-hand lane. Cindy Coburn obviously not uh, enamored with the way the pins were set. So an excellent shot and a ringing 10, so the re-rack didn't seem to help matters any. Well, or she may have left company with the pins in if she hadn't re-racked, but that was an excellent shot. Very strong in the pocket. She got the ball to break at a beautiful angle into the pocket. And watch the 6'10 wrap around the 10. Cindy Coburn averaging 214.3 for the week. That's the 11th career title. And if there's anybody that bowls well under pressure, it's this young lady from North Tonawanda, New York. There you see Andy Johnson representing Seagram's Wine Coolers and also, of course, Sonny Franz, the president of the BPAA. Boy, what a relationship those two major companies uh, have established here over the last year or so. Yes, and we can look forward to their involvement for the next few years, at least the next two years, and we are extremely pleased about that. Well, Norman, great shot in the fourth frame, so maybe that open by Cindy Coburn, really the thing that Carol needed to charge her up. She's been throwing the ball very, very well. Here you get to see another absolutely beautiful shot. Carol getting the ball out over the line much more than Cindy and much more than the rest of the players have been, but it's working. You know, we talked about that. In essence, we've got a couple of players who have thrown it fairly straight, a couple who hook it a little bit, and then one player in between. So they're, they're uh, approaching the pocket from all different angles here this afternoon, and Carol Norman right now has, uh, I guess, the ideal shot. Well, it looks like it so far, but you know, this is, this is the match. And so nerves are going to have to play some part in that. Now, we're talking about somebody in between. Carol Norman has left the 2-5 and the bucket now on this left-hand lane. Cindy Coburn threw it a little wide, and because she hooks it a little bit more than Carol does, Cindy was able to carry a strike coming around behind the headpin a little more. Why well, does nothing like having to shoot the bucket? You're bowling for a major title. There's nothing like having to shoot the bucket, period. Gives it plenty of room. Don't close down too fast. Oh. I don't know about you, but I've already moved to the edge of my chair. This one's worth $40,000, Virginia. That's a lot of money. Well, and the, the girl that finishes second is going to pick up 20000 Cindy already knows what that feels like to pick up a check that big. Carol doesn't. And in essence, uh, would you say that uh, the player who wins would have a leg up on player of the year honors, perhaps in 87? Without a doubt. Not only the $40,000 first prize, but being the U.S. Open champion. Cindy a little out of time. She's closing her shoulder a little too soon and pulling the ball left. Leaves the 3-6 here in the fifth frame. Now she trails by six pins. And this, not necessarily a tough spare, but spares this week, we've already gone over that, have not been easy. Cindy with an outstanding television record. Used that uh, harder surface blue ball all week long to shoot spares. And uh, as I talked to her before the telecast today, she said, Daddy, I, I don't think I'm gonna use the strike ball I used all week long. There's another one I have that's getting a little better reaction. So. Uh, I don't think she is bowling with the ball she used for 56 games either, and that, that's got to be a little difficult. Well, not necessarily. Most of your equipment is going to feel fairly similar, and if you can go out there and say, hey, I've got a ball I've got a lot more confidence in, hey, go for it. Yeah, but in my mind, you'd have confidence in the ball that got you through the 56 games, wouldn't you? Except for the fact she said she used about three of them. Mm -hmm. Gives this one a little room and doesn't quite get back, leaves the 2-8. Cindy skidded that one a little bit more down the lane before it started to make the move back, and as a result, she's got the 2-8. Another difficult spare. Cindy picks up her strike ball this time to shoot the spare. She's decided she wants the ball that's going to hook a little bit more to try and pick up that double wood. Cindy Coburn's highest all-time finish in the U.S. Open, sixth. 
Obviously, she's better that mark heading into this one today. Significantly. Good shot.